For as long as anyone can remember, Nigeria has been at a crossroad. The events of the last few years are indications that Nigeria may finally be at the final crossroad, where the toughest decisions that the country has avoided all this while are now unavoidable. Welcome to the show. My name is Rudolf Okonkwo, and today we are going to have a conversation on the state of things in Nigeria. Last week, as some of you know, the governor of Fondo State, Mr. Rotimi Ekere Dolu, gave the Fulani headsmen in Ondo Forest seven days to leave the forest. Now, those who wish to continue to stay were required to register with the state government. At the same time, after giving Fulani people a seven day quick notice in Oyo State, Ududuwa activists led by Sunday Iboho chased away Fulani people in Igungun in Oyo State. Now, joining us to have a discussion on these and other issues is Sam Oyabayo. Sam is the Deputy Global Coordinator of Odua Action Movement Worldwide. Mr. Oyebaya, welcome to Iroko Post TV. So, Mr. Sam uh, Oyebayo, welcome to Iroko Post TV. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. So, we're happy to have you. You are the Deputy Global Coordinator of Odua Action Movement Worldwide. Am I correct? Yes, I am. Thank you. All right. So let's start with what happened yesterday in your state. Uh, what is your take on uh, the events of yesterday? Now, what happened yesterday was a clear indication of lack of governance. I won't even use the word proper governance. It's because we have people who are supposed to be in governance, but they are in power. They are... They are there for their own selfish ends. Security is the primary responsibility of any government worldwide. And when that fails, it's an indication that there is no governance. If I, a citizen can then take it upon them himself to, to fight for other citizens, not for personal gain, it's a clear indication that there is no governance. Sunday Boho, we thank him for all his effort, his tenacity, his strength, and his ability to make sure that ordinary people are not being molested, being killed, being maimed by foreigners. And that was exactly what happened. He went there, he went to Igagan, which is northern part of Yoruba land, and to see that the kidnappers are stopped. And to everybody's surprise, the Seriki, who is like the head of the, of the Fulani in there, was having so many exotic cars. And it's like, you're a hurt man. Where is this phone from? How could you have so many expensive cars with this? Then it also happened that when one of the princes of the town was kidnapped, it was this Seriki that took money from the family to go and give to the kidnappers. Meaning that if you add this together, he must be partaking in this kidnapping process. So when Sunday Igboho realized that, then he gave them the ultimatum, which the government has never been. Up till today, we've never seen anybody in prison, in police custody, or anything for kidnapping, for killing, for anything. So as a result, he Sunday took it upon himself to fight for his people. And that was exactly what he did. He took an army of concerned Yorubas and probably non Yorubas as well down to Igagan and they went and fight the Fulani, chased them out of the town and got peace in there. I think he deserves a round of applause. He deserves a lot of praises rather than condemnation. Mm. Now, what, what do you expect will happen next? Uh, we saw it in today's newspapers that the IG of police uh, ordered 
the arrest of Sunday Igboho? Yes, well, obviously they will want to because we have people in power who are part of the terrorists who did nothing about the killing and maiming and raping of people. Do they, there was issue of warrants um, arrest of Sunday Bo. Yes, they will do that to cover their face, to show that they are in power. But um, one thing my people is, is there is a name we called us. You probably won't know. We are said to be Omoluabi. Omoluabi is like gentleman, you know, but there are two names we've got. Jagulabi. Jagulabi means a warrior. So we have that in us. That warrior bit is coming out now. So let the IG does whatever he wants. Let the commissioner of police does whatever he wants. Let the governor who is also licking um, the A, I will use the proper word, of the top Fulani people, let them do whatever they want. The people have spoken in a village. I, I can't count how many hundreds of thousands of people that turn up yesterday. You're going to kill all of them? I don't think so. Mm. Now, now let, let's look at the, the other angle to this, which is the Fulani position. Uh, there were people who were arguing that, you know, uh, not all Fulanis uh, are criminals, and that um, even though that they are being blamed for certain things going on with, you know, uh, people have shown some evidence that their uh, involvement, but that's not a reason to chase away all Fulani in any particular part of the country. What do you say to that? I agree with you, not all Fulanis are criminals until now. We've, since I was born, I was raised in a village in Yoruba land. We've had them, Fulanis, with their cattles. They go about with stick, you know, and my dad was a farmer. We never had any issue with them eating our crops or whatever. This is different from what is happening now. We've, the Yorubas coexist with anybody, whatever color, creed, religion you are, that's what we are. And there's never been this issue until recently when we have Fulani, some of them that are destroying, killing, raping us and all kind of things. And if genuinely those that have been there for years, the Seriki speak, clear Yoruba language. He's, he's been there, the Gaga one, he's been there for over 50 years. When he speaks, you won't know he's a full animal. But he, at the moment, things have changed. They are conniving with these thugs. If they are not, if, for instance, they know them, they speak the same language with these thugs, with these terrorists. It is their responsibility to chase them out, to stop them but rather they are using them as tools. They ask them to go into the bush, rape, kidnap people, get some money. If you look at these boys who kidnap, look at them. You can't see any 3 million worth of skin on them. They don't look good, but they collect millions and millions. Are they all spending that millions on themselves? I don't think so. They must have people at home who in air-conditioned homes and offices and cars that are collecting the million, giving them, I don't know, 10,000 Naira, 100,000 Naira. So these people, the Fulani that have been there for a long time seems to have changed. So we, this is clear evidence in that. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to have to be, tribalistic in the words, using flani flani instead of criminals. But when you have 99% of a group of people attacking another different group of people, you can bet, you know, use the appropriate words. Yes, the old ones uh, seems to have changed, you know, their way of living in Yoruba community. 
Now, let, let's look at this because uh, some, some of the uh, Fulani groups, uh, they've been issuing statements. And apart from the ones saying that uh, they are not going anywhere in Ondo State also, we, we said that the governor of Ondo State also gave them seven day notice to leave the forest. Some are saying they are not going anywhere. And there are some who are now saying that um, the Southerners who are in the North are going to be treated the same way they are being treated in the South. What do you think about that possibility? Um, I can see that as you and I know that Nigeria is not working and it will never work because we didn't, we didn't agree to live together. For our brothers and sisters in the North, they need to think twice. They need to see better than us, whether they want to remain or inconvenient themselves and come home is for them to decide because the way things are going is getting worse. The, the, the ten, it is not about leadership that is the issue in Nigeria. It's about the beginning of the beginning. It's a very wrong um, marriage. It was a false marriage and it's getting worse they, rather than getting any better. So those who are in the North can have to think twice because this is different from the Yorubas in the East. There is the Igbos are not asking the Yorubas to, to leave. The Yorubas are not asking the Igbos to leave Yoruba land. We tend to have a lot of values, you know, when it comes to way of life, but it's not like that in the North. So those in the North, if they think that it's worth um, moving, I think they should, but it's not for me to, to dictate to them because they should see the future of their environment. I, the question I was getting to is something like, if, if they should do the same thing to Southern us in the North, what do you think will happen? Like if they if they should rise up and say because some of them are already threatening that, that they, well, they, they they are threatening it, but I think we need to remember what led to this. What led to this is the raping, it's like killing, it's like kidnapping. I don't think any Yoruba individual in the north, if there is, let's say it, in the north is raping, kidnapping or going about illegally in their ways of life. It, like I said, the Fulanis have been in Yoruba land for ages, probably even before I was born. There's, there's never been anything like this. The Yoruba would never ask people to leave. If we have Igbos in Yoruba land, we have the Gala, we have the Aousas, we have the Fulani, and we live, we do business with each other without any issue. But when you come into my home and then rape my wife, my daughter in my home and, and I call the police, the police has done nothing, then I must do something about it. So those, if, if, if the northerners, the Elsas, the Fulani in the north think they want to get rid of the Yorubas in there, we can't dictate to them what to do but it's not the same, it's not the same at all. I think our people in the North go about their business legally. Mm. Now, now, if I'm hearing you right, it, it seems as if you are saying that uh, there's failure of uh, uh, um, security, you know, they're, they're the people who should secure the lives and properties of people are uh, not doing their job, like the state government, the federal government. But is the alternative uh, what we have now, which is individuals rising up to, to take the law into their hands? And is that the, the last option? Well, the law into their hands, there is no law. This is a country that is not working. Mm -hmm. The law is not working. So where is the law to take it? If the law is there and is working, then we won't have to... Uh, as Sunday go to do it. the police will do their jobs, the security will do their job, but this is not working, they're not doing it. 
it's the one one I don't know, I've, I've forgotten his name now, was even saying that one of the governors is the head of Boko Haram. You can imagine that if, if people in governments, quote and unquote, because I started by saying there is no government, mm. if people in so-called gov government is head of terrorist organization, then what chance as ordinary citizen there are reason. So this is why we are where we are. We are the security officers of ourselves. We are the local government of ourselves. We look after our own water with, with, with the water we drink, with our security, our electricity. Name it. It goes on and on and on. So there isn't any governance. There is nothing. So it's not about taking law into their hands. There is no law to take. That's the sad thing. Now, now yeah, you've said several times that Nigeria is not working. Um, uh, so what is the solution? If When did you arrive at this position that Nigeria is not working? And then what's the solution? Is dissolving the country the option? Is that what you're advocating? Yeah, the, when did I arrive at this? I, I was with Shore. And being with Shore, believing that Nigeria can work. And I took the time, expenses, personal expenses, to go to Nigeria on two occasions before the election. I even volunteered without payment to work for INEC in Lagos. So I, then I believe in Nigeria. Then I believe the young can lead Nigeria. Then I believe Shure is probably one of the best that could do it. But what I saw crystallized what other people have been saying in terms of values. We have got completely different values in terms of how we should live our lives. And it allowed me to, that knowledge allowed me to go back into history. How did we, did we get here? What are the issues? And the, the more you dig into the past, the more you realize that Nigeria should not have existed in, in any way. So to answer the second part of your question, what is the way forward? The way forward is metamorphosis. Like, you know, with the turtles in, animal science in those days. And Julia need to metamorphosize. This is not about the word cessation. Cessation means end. You cannot end what you didn't start. We didn't start Nigeria. One man did it, Mr. Frederick Lugard. He did it. I won't call him Lord, you know, because he, he was an evil man that got us into where we are. So the way forward is round the table. We can still do business with each other. This, the South, the East, the West, the Yoruba, the Igbo, the Elsas, if we have nation, like we have in the United Kingdom, you have the Welsh, the Scottish, the Irish, the English, they do business with each other. They have their autonomy to a point. And the system of education in the Welsh, in Welsh is not the same as in Scotland. It's not the same as in England. So it, those are the things. It's not working and it's getting worse. Why are we deceiving ourselves? It, it, to crystallize the thing was this 1999 constitution, which was cooked by apparently 49 people. And one man who was the minister of information for Abacha said clearly that he was not informed of the constitution that the constitution just kept that when um, Olusha Gomba Sanjo was being inaugurated as the president, there was no constitution to, to present it. It was days after that the constitution came out, that it just came out. This is Minister of Information for Abacha saying that, that tells you that what we stand on is totally wrong, that needs to come down. So the way forward is, for sitting around the table and everybody take whatever regions they are, people just 
realize that this is not working. We don't need to carry guns. We don't need to kill. But <laughs> unfortunately, the husbands are enjoying the hard labor of the wife. The South is the wife. This is the word of Frederick Lugat. In one of the paper I have with me, this is uh, Lord Harcourt. Lord Harcourt was like the Secretary of State in the days of Lugat. We have, re we have released Northern Nigeria from the leading strings of treasury. The promising and well-conducted youth is now on an allowance of his own and is about to effect an alliance with a Southern lady of means. You can see we are the lady of means. And he said he has issued special license as Sir Frederick Lugard will perform the ceremony. This is a word of Lord Harcourt. So we are the lady, we are the hardworking one, and the so-called husband who are, are doing nothing. And one thing we must realize is in law, when marriage is illegal, if you are forced to be in a marriage, you don't ask for a divorce. Rather, you ask for annulment. Annulment means the marriage never happened. So there should be an annulment. Let the marriage must be annulled. And let everybody go back to pre-1914 as they were. And Yes, it's a new population. We have the history, we have everything. Then let's do different nations look after themselves. That is the way forward. Mm. So, so uh, then following your analogy, uh, why is that not uh, happening? I, I know that uh, there was a conference in Nigeria last, um, last week where they talked about, I think this week, where they talked about restructuring. And basically what the government was saying was that anybody who has interest in restructuring should go to the National Assembly. What do you think about that? Well, which, what is holding the National Assembly is the illegal constitution. So the National Assembly does not have any right really to talk about restructuring because what they are holding on to, what makes them National Assembly is wrong, it's faulty. See, things become faulty every, as every, it was faulty at the amalgamation. It became faulty in 1966 when, when the unitary system started. It's even gotten worse, 1999, with this constitution. So the National Assembly hasn't got any, if they had, been smart and agreed to restructuring many years ago, probably the Southerners will have moved on and say, okay, let's go back to regional governance and we do things the way we were doing it pre-1966. But the old happenings as well as the new happenings have convinced so many that you cannot do business with some people. L Lugard, in his work, described the North as, I've got a paper in here with me that's talking about the, which Lugard wrote about amalgamation, which he described the South and also described the North. He said the North, a rapid deterioration had however followed the decay of religious zeal, which had prompted the Fulani Jihad. And at that time, when the administration was assumed by the imperial governors in 1900, the Fulani Emirates formed a series of separate despotism marked by worst form of wholesale slave readings and so on and so forth. Now, this is what he wrote about the South. In the West, the kingdom of Benin, like its counterpart in Daomi, had up to, up to 1896 grown under a, a despotism which revealed the Holocaust of human victims. Um, then further West, the Yorubas, Egba, 
Ijebu had evolved a fairly advanced system of governance under recognized rulers. Now, if you compare those things, this is the word of Lugat, not any Yoruba man or so-called Nigerian. You could see that some people are well organized before. They live together. They are if we live in a, in a war, they are one a, a fairly advanced um, system of government under recognized rulers. Look at where we are today. It's got worse. So, so let me let me get you right. Are you saying that if if there is an offer to return to what we had in in this in the sixties at independence, that that will not be acceptable? To a lot of people, it's not acceptable because a lot of people have seen it worse. Because it's the unfortunately the people we are dealing with are very ruthless. The Fulani are very, very ruthless. They don't believe in equal rights. They believe in master-slave relationship. And that is what they have transferred down south. That is why the, the people in, gov in power, whatever you want to call it in the south, are just emulating the northerners in the way they do their things. Master-slave relationship. So the, it, it's, it's, not, it, it, it's, it's not working. It's not working because of that kind of belief. We cannot sit around the table with some people who believe you are slaves, who believe they are master, who believe they are born to rule. That's, that is what they believe. And born to rule is one thing. Having the skill is another thing. We have people in, in other parts of the world that are born to rule. The queen of England is born, she was born to rule, but she works hard. She works for her country. She does what she needs to do to protect, preserve uh, uh, the integrity of her country. If you are born to rule and you're protecting everybody, irrespective of where they come from, People will just make some noise. It won't go anywhere. But mm. when you say that some people are to be killed just because of where they come from, then we don't want to sit around the table with those people. Now, let's, let's look at um, all the options that are on the table as far as Nigeria is concerned. There's a group. Uh, one, of them, one of the leaders is uh, Tony Nadi, where they are talking about bringing down the constitution of uh, 1999. And they gave uh, the Nigerian government um, 90 days from December 16th. Are you aware of their move? And do you think that is an approach that could solve these problems? It's a very great approach. It's a very bold approach to do that. What I will say is they need to pursue that there need to be grand plan way beyond 90 days. You know, there need to be a long way of planning, plan well, so that if this happened, this is what we're gonna do. If that happened, this is what we're gonna do. If this, so that, that needs to be done. It's a, it was a very, because it was, it was a sandwich of all the southerners, the Yoruba, the Igbos, the Gala, as well as the Midwest, and so on and so forth. It was, it was, a, it was a very, very good step. All I'm saying is that they need to meet regularly and they need a lot of lobbying, international lobbying, to make sure that they, I mean, they, they, they get the, the dots all the I's and cross all the T's all over. Because they are not asking for violence. They know they just want things resolved because it was it's illegal. There's strong evidence that that constitution was illegal that says we the people, that's insulting. Which we the people? This was just one man that selected some people and they wrote the constitutions without the knowledge of the people. Now, let, let me ask you, because uh, I saw some videos of um, uh, people with Sunday uh, and they were, some of them were saying, 
uh, this is uh, Yoruba land and uh, we, something like we stand with the Biafrans. What is uh, Odua uh, action movement? What is your view on the Biafra movement as led by Namde Kano? We, we're not against Biafra movements. We, we cannot have the same goal. Odua action movement believes in autonomy of Yoruba people and Enamdi Kanu um, IPOP believes in autonomy of Igbo people. Now, this, what is important is the approach. I mean, Enamdi Kanu has his own approach as a leader, and we have our approach. Our approach is more of uh, autonomy, self determination, and that is achievable via and contact with international bodies, international um, political organizations, as well as people of reputation all over the world internationally that may have um, some sympathy for, for our cause. So yes, we, we are not against any group of people that have the same ambition the only thing is we believe in, we believe this can be achieved via peaceful means. But are you are you working together with uh, other groups like the Biafrans? Because some some people are arguing that the South will not be able to get uh, the kind of uh, things they want from Nigeria unless they work together. OAM is one of the many Yoruba groups. There are so many. Remember that there are at least 60 million Yoruba, so there cannot be just one group. I think the Igbos is about half of that. So it may be a bit easier for, I think the Igbos are 30, 30, I don't know, something million. So it may be easier for Nandi Kano a, you know, a loan to earn, let's, let's give him the credit. This, uh, he has started this struggle before the Yoruba, before OAM, you know, so he might have gone somewhere, you know, with it, but the, the OAM as one of the Yoruba groups is not the one talking to uh, iPod people. There are Yoruba um, group like, this group you've mentioned that gave Nigerian 90 days or two, uh, to, um, ultimatum that are talking to all those people. But there are discussions, you know, in all area. There was, there was a meeting some times ago where there are cross um, national meetings. But it's, it's not, it's not as structured as it should be. It's not as structured as it should be, but that is not to say that there is diversity or anything amongst us. We're fighting the same cause. Nigeria is a sandwich of Afghanistan and America. It will never work. All right, we are going to take a break. When we come back, we will talk about the revolution movement by Shore. We're also going to talk about uh, the Inca grandson and the 2023 presidency and the move by Bola Tinubu and different groups to position themselves to be the president of Nigeria in 2023. We'll be right back. This little not so long. I'm gonna make them last so whole. This little not so mine. Oh, oh. I'm gonna make them last. Oh, this little not so mine. I'm gonna. Mm -hmm. Someone, someone is first timing me. Someone. Hey! My grandson, I don't care, I don't care. How are you? Hello, Grandpa. Kedu? I don't know, man. What are you eating? Oh, <laughs> I have nothing left at home. I'm eating a uh, haku. <laughs> Kepam kanel. That's all I have at home. Now I eat meal without meat. Haku without upa. <laughs> Mbano, that's not healthy. <laughs> what can I do? Eh? Can you please help me beg your father? Beg your father this Christmas to help me. Things are hard. Things are hard. Prices of things up, up, energy up, up, up. 
induct grandpa i'll tell my dad right away <laughs> biko thank you thank you please thank you biko biko this little nuts of mine dad hey udoka can you cage grandpa is suffering in nigeria he needs your help urgently ah. udoka udoka how did you know he's suffering we we're just on a facetime call he looks so skinny now. His stomach has shrunk and it's flattened. His stomach? Yes. Let, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I, you, know, you know what? I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Look, that man, I give him money. He will go and use it to buy tobacco. And, and that's it. I give him money. He will go and give it out to his friends. And I give him money. He will go and marry a second wife and thought, no, I don't care. Whatever is happening to him. I don't, I don't care. I have a solution. What? What? Go to Help Me Waka and they'll send him any food item that you want to give Grandpa anywhere in Nigeria. Help me? Help me Waka. Help, really? Really, really. Help me Waka, the people that run errands for you. This Christmas, help your people. Go to Help Me Waka and other items for them. They will be happy. Please, help them.